welcome back in Zoom Studio. As always, I'm the artist Theodora Castiglionti, painting with Zanat Supplies, and today I'm going to show you how to paint not one, not two, but six sea creatures. I'm going to paint six sea creatures. I haven't painted that many fists before, especially using the watercolor, but I suspect it's going to be fun. After all, watercolour painting can be a little more free, it doesn't have to be photorealistic, but that depends on your style. My favourite sea creatures are whales, because as a child I loved the movie Saving Willy, and uh, yeah, I love them ever since. Don't forget to tell me at the comments section what is your favorite sea creature. The first sea creature I'm going to paint is going to be a sark. That's why I'm going to use mostly uh, grey and uh, blue mixed together. You can find uh, many nice images of uh, sarks and uh, other faces in uh, freeimages.com. It's a royalty free site and uh, you can use their images uh, any way you like. I'm starting with a thick wash of um, grey blue color and as I move uh, towards the body it becomes a bit lighter and again a bit darker towards his uh, top fin. His fins are going to be the duckers. And I'm painting uh, using number 7 round brush from Zanat from the tulip set. And a number two brush from the miniature collection for the smaller details such as his eyes, his um, nose, his teeth. And uh, don't forget, as I've mentioned before in the other videos, uh, if you want to make an area darker, then uh, you just add another wash. And uh, don't forget that when painting with watercolors, you have to paint and think in layers. The next sea creature is going to be a ray. Did you know they were related to sharks? I had no idea. They seem so friendly to me. Again, I'm going to use uh, the same color that I used for the sark, which is um, gray mixed with uh, blue. And as I wait for it to dry, I'm going to add a few small uh, details to the shark, his teeth. And uh, as I'm waiting for my ray to dry a bit so I can add a few more layers to its uh, main body, I am mixing the colors that I'm going to use for my next fish. I don't remember what it's called, but I remember that I picked it because I love the color it has. It is so pink and uh, red and um, orange and all my favorite colors basically just a small fish now as i'm waiting for the pink fish to dry it's time to finish the ray Now I'm going to add a few fine lines using number two brush from the miniature set and now I'm going to switch to number seven round brush from the black tulip set. 
and uh, I'm adding a few washers to its main body. And uh, using some white ink, I'm adding a few spots and marks to its body that I notice it has. And I'm going to add another layer to the part where its body is uh, darker. If you want to add the spots, don't forget to wait for your painting to dry first because it's going to flip in and it might end up uh, being a bit more messier than you originally intended to. Now that my pink face has dried, I can start working on it again and I'm adding a few details to the eye. It has some green uh, to its bottom fins, so I'm adding a few lines. And I'm blending in uh, some uh, ink color. It has some uh, purple details also, so I'm adding a few lines to its uh, face. Its upper thin, that is called dorsal thin, it's more orangey red. It has also some uh, light yellow details. And now that I'm done with the pink fish, I'm going to move on to the fourth one, but it's going to be a soup horse. I'm going to use mostly yellow color for a soup horse, as it is yellow and it has a lot of um, dark spots on it, and maybe a bit of uh, green and orange and I'm starting with uh, a thin layer of colour to its main body with a number two brush from the miniature set I'm adding a few marks and dots to its back bend and up the front I'm not trying to paint in a realistic way, it's more um, illustrated I'd say, but that really depends on your style and what you want to achieve.
Now I'm adding another layer of colour using number 7 brush from the Black Tulip collection uh, which is my favourite brush to use because uh, it's not too small or too big and uh, it absorbs the right amount of water which is perfect for washes. And with a smaller brush from the miniature set, I'm adding even more dots and marks that I've noticed it has all over its body. And for the finishing touches, I'm imagine some green mixed with yellow uh, for the darker spot details that it has at the front. And I'm letting it dry. And I'm going to move on to my favorite, which is the whale, as I mentioned before. And the colors I'm going to use is going to be black, uh, gray, mostly, and white, which is going to be the white of the paper. Now I'm just laying uh, the wash with the number 7 round brush and I'm leaving some of the areas of its body blank but we're going to add uh, the wash later now that the seahorse has dried a bit I'm going to add another wash of colour at its spine and moving back to the whale. I'm going to add a thin wash towards its bottom. Just a small shadow. And last but not least, it's the starfish. I notice it has like this uh, spiky points towards its end and uh, its middle kind of outlining it and the one I found it has uh, red uh, sp spikes sort of and uh, its main body is um, grayish so I'm just adding the red details first and then I'm going to add um, this greyish wash. And now my sea creatures are finished and I'm adding a decorative wash at the top of the painting to make it seem a little more complete.
that was today's video i hope you have enjoyed watching if you do don't forget to share like and subscribe and i'm gonna see you at the next video where i'm going to paint an underwater scene so don't miss it out until then have a great day bye